picture we have seen the representation of space curves in 2d now we are going to add one third coordinate system that is z coordinate system similarly here also 3d space curves are represented non parametrically or parametrically so param non parametrically again there are two types explicit non parametric representation and implicit non parametric representation so in explicit non parametric representation here we along with x and y coordinate we use z coordinate also similarly in implicit representation then it is not possible to show the closed curve in explicit form we use non parametric implicit representation form for example if we consider a circle its equation is x square plus y square minus r square is equal to 0 so that is represent in implicit form for example it is shown here f of x comma y comma z is equal to 0 g of x comma y comma z is equal to 0 now the next is parametric representation of space curve in 3d again here we add one of the parameter that is z you can see here so two examples are shown here one example is seam of baseball so when we consider this baseball and we draw a curve with this three uh, coordinate system or this three equation it is look like this as shown in this diagram while the same we use parametric representation here on helix for example then it is like this as a curve are generated as a spring so that is parametric representation of curves now we move towards the next one parametric representation in detail there are two types of parametric representation in 3d first one is piecewise linear curve for example suppose i take here four to five points and draw a curve for that four points suppose this is my first point this is my second third fourth and this is fifth point so in piecewise linear curve we connect these points with straight line and that's why it represent with a linear equation for example y is equal to mx b, b which is the equation of a simple line so that is piecewise linear curve or we call it as a piecewise linear curve representation now the second one is piecewise polyma polynomial curve now if we consider the same five points here now in this polynomial instead of straight line we draw it like a curve in polynomial way and that's why it is represented with polynomial equations such as x raised to 3 plus x square plus 8 this is one of the example of degree 3 so when it is degree 3 means four points are used to draw a curve so in our example 1 2 3 4 5 points are used means here our degree is x raised to 4 now how this degree affects on the polynomial equation that we are going to see for example if we draw a curve with 16 points so i take here 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and draw polynomial curve. Here we are going to consider only polynomial curve not a linear equation we are going to use. So when we consider 16 point the equation will be x raised to 15 polynomial equation and which is very complex for execution in computer system and that is why here we are going to consider only 4 points with polynomial of degree 3 that is x raised to 3 which is also known as parametric cubic curves now this parametric cubic curves we are going to see how we can represent it with the equations now as already i have told that maximum four points we are going to consider suppose i take here four points this is one b second third and fourth and i join these four points okay so this point i call it as a it is b it is c and it is d then how we represent it with x is equal to x t so what is t we have learned in the previous lecture t is the position vector at that particular curve at x coordinate y t is the position vector for y coordinate and z t is the position vector for 
z coordinate now using this we how we write the equation that is q of t is equal to this x t position vector at x coordinate position vector at y coordinate and position vector at z coordinate now general form of equation how we write for x t it is simple it is point a so x coordinate it become a x t raised to 3 plus b x t square plus c x t plus d x and in the same way we write it for y y t and we can write it for z t so you see once again for this we have taken four points and according to that we write the equation for these four points now this is written here for x t y t and z t so x t is equal to a t raised to 3 that we have written it is for y t and this is for z t now if we want to represent it with the matrix capital t is equal to t raised to 3 t square t and 1 it is 1 into 4 matrix then uh, this a b c d points we represent as a 3 into 4 matrix we call it as a c which is a x a y and a z b x b y b z in this way we write this matrix and q t is now t into c now this matrix whatever we have generated we are going to use in the next points afterwards in cubic spline curve now we start with cubic spline so what is cubic spline in rafting terminology when mainly ship building okay when we consider ship building in that case we use cubic spline curve so in ship building spline is a flexible strip used to produce a smooth curve through a designated set of points as already we have drawn the curve with some of the points in this way here suppose we consider example we take a piece of paper and generate the waves of this paper so that waves are nothing but the curve smooth curve generated with the piece of paper so how to you how this shape is controlled for that several small weights are distributed so in this diagram you can see here the weights are used small weights along the length of the streak along this length of the strip small uh, weights are used to hold it in position on the drafting table as curve is drawn the term spline curve originally referred to the curve drawn in this manner that is known as spline curve so these weights are used and according to these weights the shape of the curve is changed now see cubic spline curves has two types interpolation and obstruction spline so we specify a spline curve by giving a set of coordinate position now this set of coordinate position we call it as a control point and that control points for example suppose i consider this one two three four so these are my four point control points which indicate the general shape of the curve these control points are then fitted with piecewise continuous parametric polynomial function. So, onwards we are going to consider only polynomial function not the linear function. So, polynomial function in two ways interpolation and approximation. So, interpolation. So, when polynomial sections are fitted so that the curve passes through each control point. You can see here in this example all the four control points are considered that we call it as a interpolation so interpolation curves are commonly used to digitize drawing or to specify animation paths now what is approximation so in approximation not necessarily that all control points are used to draw the curve for example this point and this point both are not used to draw the curve so that is known as approximation so i write draw here another example suppose in this way I draw so what happens these three points are not used only single point is used so that is known as approximation and these are primarily used to design the tools to structure the object surface now in our example we are going to use interpolation in which all the control points are used to draw the curve shape now to ensure smooth transition from one section of a piecewise polynomial curve to the next we can impose various continuity condition means for example suppose i draw this piece of curve in this way 
this is first piece and this is second piece so this p and this is suppose q so these two pieces are connected with smooth transition and for that there are two ways parametric continuity condition and geometric continuity condition first we are going to see parametric continuity condition so parametric continuity condition has three types zero order parametric continuity first order parametric and second order parametric continuity so in zero order it's a very simple means that two piece of curves are joined or meet are joined or meet at the same point for example suppose i take this first piece of curve i call it as a p and this second piece of curve i call it as a q and these two this is the first starting point of p so it is t is equal to 0 this is t is equal to 1 for p now at this position t is equal to 0 for q and suppose t is equal to 1 for q so at this point both are same join meet at the same point so we call it as a zero order parametric continuity c raised to a zero suppose i draw this two curves like this one first p and this q now both are joined at the same point so whether this is para zero order parametric condition s it is zero order because they are meet at the same point suppose i draw like this first one this like this and q like this so what happens here for p this is t is equal to 1 while for q this is t is equal to 0 both are not same point and that's why this is not a zero order parametric continuity but these two are this one and this one is the zero order parametric continuity first order parametric continuity means that first parametric derivative tangent lines of the coordinate function for two successive curves are at equal at their joining point means here we consider first derivative of the tangent lines and in second order parametric continuity means that the first and second parametric derivatives of the two curve sections are equal at their joining point means first order and also the second order parametric derivatives are equal now geometric continuity condition see once again parametric zero order second order first order and second order geometric parametric con continuity so it deals with the shape of the curve so normally shape is depends upon the geometric continuity condition here we require parametric derivatives of two sections to be proportional to each other at their common boundary instead of equal to each other means here equal is not required here we require it's a proportion it should be proportional to each other not necessary equal so first again it has three types zero order geometric continuity first order geometric continuity and second order geometric continuity so zero order is same as zero order parametric continuity that is the two curve section suppose i draw this is p and this is q both are joined at the same point boundary point that is zero order parametric continuity same as zero order geometric continuity now the second first order geometric continuity so in first order geometric continuity means that the parametric derivatives are first parametric derivatives are proportional at the intersection of two successive curves so here i draw suppose this is p and from here this is q this is part p so here again t is equal to 0 t is equal to 1 for q it is t is equal to 0 and t is equal to 1 so proportional at the intersection of two successive curves here we consider the tangent vector proportional means suppose for example in this case the tangent vector for p is in this direction while tangent vector for q is also 
in this direction so you can see both have in the same direction and proportional to each other but it may or may not be equal now how we represent is p dash x y z it is the first order derivative and k is the constant we multiply all these with the same constant value and that's why it becomes proportional so it shows that the first order parametric derivative implies second first order geometric derivative but the first order geometric derivative is not equal to first order parametric derivative because in parametric we require it should be equal while in geometric it may not be may or may not be equal and that's why parametric derivative implies geometric but geometric may not imply imply the parametric continuity so tangent vectors in this way it these are used second order same second order means that both the first and second parametric derivatives of these two curve sections are proportional at their boundary point and tangent vector direction is also same so it is p double shown as p double dash x y z is equal to again q double dash k into x k into y k into z where k is some constant value so here again i can say second parametric continuity implies second order geometric continuity but second order geometric continuity does not equal to second order parametric continuity so that is about the cubic line interpolation now a curve generated with geometric continuity condition is similar to one generated with parametric continuity but with slight difference in the curve shape so you can see here this is p0 p1 p2 p0 p1 p2 this is p0 p1 p2 this is the first curve c1 this is c2 this is c1 and this is c3 so here it shows the parametric continuity and here it shows the geometric continuity so here the tangent vector of this c3 is greater than magnitude than the tangent vector of c1 and that's why according to tangent vector the shape is changed the curve is pulled towards the section with greater tangent vector so you can see here the more curve shown in this so for that one simple video we are going to see so in this way we can see the continuity now the next lecture we are going to see the cubic spline curve in detail